Welcome back to the channel guys, my name is Joseph and today we got our first big update for Biomutant patch 1.4. Now I'm not going to go through every single detail, I'm just going to go through three things I thought were important to the overall game to make it a better feeling game and just a more balanced game. But if you want to see the whole thing, I'll make sure to link it down below for you and put it in the description so you can see every single point. Now let's get right into the video and address some of the issues. Now like I said, this patch is going to have a whole bunch of things, but I mean with the first obvious being the PC specific. Specific. It is a PC specific patch that came out right now, but it's very similar patches coming out for consoles very soon. And for the PC guys, it has fixed some issues with the AMD based CPUs built in graphics. There were some issues there as well as some crashes, yeah, along with invalid display data on the AMD based CPUs. But it ends up obviously some, some tutorial stuff were fixed up where it just kind of plays a little bit better and performs the way it's supposed to. But the first thing I want to uh, address here is going to be the dialogue and narrator now they've reduced the amount of gibberish spoken before the narrator starts translating and added additional setting toggles for gibberish and the narrator allowing players to select if they want to hear the narrator and the gibberish or both when talking to npcs they also fixed narration and gibberish playing silently and producing an awkward pause when each corresponding volume setting is set to zero basically overall just improving the narration and gibberish i think this is great for example i thought it was was really annoying how much gibberish you would hear before the translation would start and just sometimes the narrator himself during gameplay would just talk way too much so it's nice to give you the option for the player if you enjoy this thing because people are very 50 50 on this if you enjoy it well there's a chance for you to kind of keep it the way it was and get to the point of the story right away if you didn't like it you can t turn it down as well not to mention in the difficulty settings they added an extreme difficulty setting where enemy damage and attack rate is further increased which is nice and they fixed the difficulty setting not being able to apply for already spawned enemies so you wouldn't have to turn the game off and on to have your difficult setting set in for anybody who beat the game like i've just beaten my game myself if you start a new game plus it opens up all class perks for new game plus games when starting a new place game new play new play new game plus game the player will now be able to unlock perks from all classes again a nice option especially makes you a total powerhouse and it gives you no reason to restart with a different character it really just gives you hey i want to play with one character and have absolutely everything they have some setting options like uh, added motion blur sliders and uh, they've adjusted some camera work in uh, combat but to kind of keep going what i thought was more important is the item and loot now check this out, increased chances that items found have a high level requirements closer to the player's actual level when found. Players will still be able to find items with higher level requirements, but the player level now is taken into account, which is important. I found some great items, but they were so far away from my character, it was no point in keeping them. I would just sell them because I know I would find better items later on. As well as they removed common item loot, loot drops from high level crates, which is kind of funny. This was the same issue with Outriders when it first came out. So it's nice that the same issue was kind of spotted here and there and it's been fixed up. They're very responsive to the community. It seems like they've very quickly addressed a lot of these issues. They also reduce the amount of healing items so that player will find from crates and defeated enemies. And that is true. I found by the end of the game, I had like 60 health, health potions and I didn't even waste half of them. So it's definitely to kind of provide more challenge is to give you a bit less healing, I think is the right decision here. Now, this is a really important two points right here. Increase base damage from melee bodies, handles, and add-ons by approximately 5%, and reduce base damage from range bodies, muzzles, and grips by approximately 5%. Again, balancing, because right now, before this, ranged weapons were a lot more effective. Now they're making the melee a little bit kind of stronger, so it has the advantage over guns. So it's, I think, a nice change here they also fix resistance stats not being able to apply for crafted gear when adding add-ons which sometimes happen to me as well reduce gear add-on resistance and critical bonus chances ensure the quest reward for diverse helmet will no longer drop random loot and remove slots from all protective suits essentially just balancing the game making sure everything performs the way it's supposed to out of sound i thought this again first two things here are very important updated melee sound effects across the board because they kind of sounded weak and they've updated mount sound effects as well now when it comes to combat there's quite a few things they've changed as well 
The first thing I thought was important in the combat was they adjusted valid angles for combat targets to reduce camera movement in combat, which again makes it a little bit better when you're finding enemies. Uh, the disabled camera look at when striking characters up in the air. Essentially, if you kind of go through it, they've adjusted the speed of some enemy grabs. Uh, it's now a little bit easier to dodge in time. The fixed kick attack from smaller enemies being too difficult to parry. And parry window is now more consistent. And enemies can be staggered out of it. Uh, all tribe Sifus and Lupa Lupin in the final counter now react stronger to being parried. And allowing players to parry and then counter attack. Again, this is all important stuff making combat feel more reliable that was one of my issues you couldn't really parry effectively some a lot of times you couldn't even dodge effectively so it's nice that they're addressing a lot of these issues and you kind of can go through all the points here but the ones i want to keep going on there's some quest stuff they fixed there's some crashes there's some user interface stuff they fixed and some world war stuff they fixed but the one i want to focus on here and i thought those are just kind of a little bit more funny than serious is the disabled fast travel when jumping from water so if you were going to drown in water you were able to jump in the air and now you could teleport out now you can't do that you're committing to the fact that you might kill your character by jumping in the water i thought that was just kind of a funny exploit they fixed however I thought this patch overall fixed a whole bunch of issues. It looks like they're very responsive to the community and they want this game to succeed. And it looks like generally speaking, you know, some people like it, some people don't. It's not the horrid disaster that the pre previews kind of made it out to be. So it's nice to see that uh, people are enjoying the game. I beat the game, I, I enjoyed it. It wasn't anything out of the world, but it's nice. It was a nice adventure game to play, an action, an action RPG adventure to play. But I would love to know from you guys, do you think this patch addressed some of the issues that you were having? Do you still have issues with this game that you want to be fixed up? And how much are you enjoying the game yourself? Do you find it kind of meh? so so do you find the game really fun or is it just absolutely atrocious let me know down below in the comments and if you enjoy this kind of content and content surrounding action games in general make sure to subscribe down below to this channel as i'll be covering pre and post release for action games we'll do previews impressions reviews when i can so basically giving you the most amount of information on leaks and rumors on everything that revolves around action games and i hope you guys enjoy the rest of your day and peace out